சமந்தாச்சக்கிரவாலேசு அச்சந்து சந்தமுனிராஜசுனந்து சகமுக்கம் தம்மசவனோ அயம் வதந்த தம்மசவனோ அயம் வதந்த தம்மசவனோ அயம் வதந்த நமோன்ஸ்வோன்ஸ் Okay, dear Dhamma friends, now we are going to start our weekly Dhamma program. Uh, first of all, we meditated about, few, uh, about 30 minutes and uh, after that we start our class. Uh, in this class, uh, we describe, we discuss about Buddha's message and uh, his doctrines and how do we meditate. and what should be practiced according to Buddha's message. Um, according to Buddha's message, the knowledge is very important. Uh, when we discuss uh, Buddha's message, as we mentioned before, we have to overcome uh, three steps. The one of them is knowledge. Knowledge is very important. Without knowledge, we have nothing to practice. Uh, if you uh, go to another place, first of all, we should know, you should know the map or road. Uh, without uh, knowing the path, uh, you have no way to drive. Therefore, knowledge is very important. Uh, knowledge is the first thing that we have to know. The second one is, according to knowledge, we have to reflect on it again and again. Reflection or reflecting. Uh, reflecting also very important. <coughs> although we have knowledge, although we have knowledge, if we don't reflect on it, it doesn't go to permanent in our life. That is why Buddha explained it is very important reflecting according to knowledge. We have to reflect on it again and again. Not only when you are in the temple. Uh, Any time, it doesn't, uh, when it comes to your memory, try to develop it again and again. That is very important. For example, uh, here we practice loving kind meditation. It is very important for mental health. We wish all of them in the world. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. When we practice this concept, our anger is uh, going to destroy. Uh, it goes away. The main thing, the main cause that we suffer in our day-to-day life is anger. Therefore, Buddhism emphasizes very important thing that At the very beginning of the peace of mind, practicing this message, it is very important practicing loving kind meditation. We mostly suffer because of anger. When we think about others' mistakes or misbehavior, we are upset, we are angry. Therefore, if we can keep our mind always with loving kindness, of friendliness, it means we can overcome, we can reduce 50% stress in our life. Uh, the main sign that you practice uh, the path of purification or happiness is practicing loving kindness. If you don't practice loving kindness, it means 
you haven't come to the path be sure that is why according to buddhism it is said very clearly that practicing loving kindness is the first step of the peace of mind that is very important they are we practice loving kind meditation not only in sitting meditation when we drive when we walk when we work we can think about it again and again be all beings may all beings be well happy and peaceful that is very important reflecting on this message knowledge is very important if we don't reflect on our knowledge our knowledge is useless we have nothing and when we are going to reflect on something first of all we may have knowledge both of them are very important on the other hand we have to practice this another way the practice uh, this is the first step second step and third step what is the practice in buddhism practice is yeah meditation through meditation through meditation what we practice hmm samatha yeah samatha and vipassana samatha means tranquility or concentration vipassana means wisdom or insight meditation samatha bhavana vipassana bhavana samatha bhavana means practicing tranquility or concentration insight meditation means uh, practicing wisdom or intelligence when we practice these both ways <laughs> Uh, samatha samatha and vipassana uh, be sure we practice both good things good qualities what they are we practice mindfulness uh, mindfulness and wisdom mm-hmm. this is the main purpose of practicing samatha and vipassana mindfulness means we keep our full awareness full attention about our body and mind using samatha meditation we practice mindfulness so awareness what is the awareness awareness of mind and body we have full attention we have full awareness what happens to my body and mind we concentrate on our posture what posture now i use and what kind of ideas now in my mind hmm if we have this mindfulness defilements have no chance to come to your mind your mind is very pure and calm if negative ideas come to your mind you know very well now i have anger desire hatred jealousy now we know very well what happens to my mind and body also when we do some activities physically we know very well what i do now this is these three things are very important uh, first thing is knowledge knowledge is very important from the beginning to end from the first level of purification to highest level we have to listen to this message again and again uh we should not stop in the first level even enlightened person also has have discussed this message with others therefore from the beginning to end we have to develop our knowledge again and again how much we have knowledge it depends on our success in practicing this message for example if you know only way to only one way to go to la then if that road is traffic eh yeah, you have no uh, extra path to way roads you have no option if you know several ways several path how you go to la then if some way is traffic you can use optional optional and also 
On the other hand, if you know science, when you go far away, more than uh, 500 or 600 miles, if you have clear knowledge about the path or science that you have to pass, then seeing the science, you can drive on the path. When you reach some kind of cities, you know very well, now I am in the real way, real path. You have no doubt because of your clear knowledge. This is also very important knowledge. You know, in Buddha's period, in India, some monks, after they ordained, first of all, they are listening to this message very clearly from beginning to end. After that, they left Buddha, they went to the jungles and forests, they meditated with that knowledge. They came back with full awareness, with enlightenment. In this period, we have to listen to this message again and again. We have many chances. We can associate some teachers, we can read some books, we can refer some internet websites. We are so lucky in this period. We have many ways to uh, reach to this knowledge. And however, knowledge, what is the knowledge that Buddha said? What kind of knowledge that we have to develop? Listening this message. What Buddha said? What Buddha explained to the world? Yeah, there are several main doctrines. Eightfold Path, uh, Four Noble Truths, and all Buddha's doctrines can be divided into two. What they are? Karmic law and dependent origination. Yeah, very good. Yeah. All of Buddha's teachings can be divided into two. First thing is the karmic law and dependent origination. What I think you know karmic law. Uh, karma is a very familiar word to you. Yeah. Hmm? What is the karmic law that Buddha explained? Karmic law means when we do something with wicked mind, with unclear mind, we will have the bad results, verbally, mentally or physically. Uh, if we do bad deeds or evil, with wicked mind, verbally, physically or mentally, we will have the bad results because of polluted mind. And also, if we do something with pure mind, physically, verbally or mentally, we will have the good results because of pure mind, clear mind. This knowledge is the first step of Buddhism. If somebody has this knowledge, what does he do? If you have this knowledge, what you do? Clean your mind, Yeah, always you try to overcome evil, bad behavior. Always you try to keep your mind present and calm, doing good deeds in your life. What is the reason? You know very well if you do something, if we do something with wicked mind, we will have the bad results. We don't like bad results. Uh, all of beings in the world, they like happiness. If we do bad deeds with wicked mind, we will not have good results. That is why we overcome evil. We always try to develop good deeds uh, with pure mind. We are always ready to offer something to others. We are always ready to help others. We always keep our body and speech calm and quiet. We have good discipline in our speech and behavior. That is very important. It says in Buddhism, morality or virtue. The third one is that we always try to keep our mind very present and calm. We protect our mind. When we have this knowledge, what is the very valuable thing in our life? Mind. Others are not valuable like mind. 
mind is the main cause or reason whether we happy or not. Therefore, we keep our mind like a very pleasant, good smell, new flower. We don't disturb our flower. And we always keep our mind like a very new, good smell, rose flower. You, the reason is we know very well our happiness depends on good mind, pure mind. Yeah. This is the first level of karmic law, the knowledge. Day by day, we read something, we are listening to something, how we can improve our knowledge about karmic law. It doesn't sound that there is a permanent person. That is the difference, that is the main difference of Buddhism, you know, in Indian tradition, even Hinduism. We can see the teachings of karmic law, but they explain the karmic law, explain in the permanent person. That soul or ego goes from birth to birth. But difference in Buddhism is, even though Buddhism has explained karmic law, we don't believe a certain soul or ego. Our mind or ego or self also every moment it changes. For example, you know very well, when you were born in this world, your body is completely different. Now your body is completely different. And do we, do we say the different person? We don't say. And you are baby life and now uh, you are different. And also on the other hand, we don't say the same person. We can't say the uh, you are baby life and now is same. It is not same or different. It has some kind of relationship. But it is not completely same. Our mind is like that. We have some kind of identity, relationship. But it doesn't sound that we are same, we are permanent. Eh? It is a very good example. Eh? Our next life also like, like that. Eh? We don't say another person, no same person. However, the second step of the knowledge, the karmic law, actually not only Buddhism, when the Lord Buddha was born in the world, there were many traditions and religions in the world who believed the karmic law. Uh, believing in the karmic law is not in Buddhism. There are many religions in the world who believe the karmic law. But when we discuss the karmic law in Buddhism, we can see some differences, especially Buddhism doesn't believe a certain soul or ego or mind. Mind also, every moment, it changes, but it has some kind of relationship with our previous mind, previous life. The second step of knowledge, what is the second step of knowledge that Buddhism says? Dependent origination. That is the identity of Buddhism. You know, in this level, we can see a lot of equals in the world among religions and philosophers. But when we go to the, this level, is they are the same with others? No, it is the identity of Buddhism. It is the very important thing that Buddhism says. It is no anywhere. It is only in Buddhism. What is the teachings about dependent origination? Seasonal yeah. Dependent origination explains the impermanence. Impermanence. What is the impermanence that you have already understood? What is the impermanence? Everything is always changing. Changing. Yeah. Yeah, that is the surface level meaning about impermanence. But impermanence and change in its difference. You can see the impermanence. You can, you can see the change in. 
For example, your body, little by little, it is growing up, and this building can be destroyed, and our body is going to sicknesses, our body is subject to die. These are the things that we can see changing. Actually, understanding of changing is very easy. But understanding of impermanence is not easy. Even scientists, they have divided atom. They have discovered electron, photon, neutron. They have explained, they have discovered changing very well. But according to Buddhism, according to Buddhism, according to Buddhism, they have not discovered the impermanence. What is the thing that Buddhism says about impermanence? According to Buddhism, impermanence is not only changing, but we get experience through our senses, through our eyes, through our nose, through our ears, through our nose, through our body. We get experience through these six senses. This is this is only our world. This is only our experience. Except this experience, we have nothing. When we get this experience, this experience arises in this moment. There is a very good example always we get. That when we go to the mirror, you know mirror? You can see your shadow, your figure. When we go to the mirror, when we go to the mirror, you can see your picture in the mirror. Before you went to mirror, it was there. Before you go to the mirror, it was a figure there about you. No. After you came back, it remains there. No. As soon as you go to the mirror, when lights are here, when you look at there, when your figure is there, you can see a picture there. As soon as you go away, nothing remains there. Our experience also like that. If you look at something, if you hear something, if you smell something, that experience with the conditions, it arises at the moment. When conditions go away, the experience ceases. This is the impermanence that Buddhism says. It says very clearly, this experience arises this moment with these conditions. Nothing comes to the present from the past. Nothing goes to the future from the present. At the moment, it arises. At the moment, it ceases. Before you go to the mirror, there was no figure there. When you come back, it doesn't remain there. With the conditions, you can see a picture in the mirror. It arises with the conditions. If any condition is not there, you can see the picture. If light is off, you can see the picture. If you keep other way the mirror, you can see the picture. If you go away from the mirror, you can see the picture. If you close your eyes, you can see the picture. All of these things depends on the conditions. Our experience also like that. If we have this knowledge, what happens to us? We don't hold on to anything. Then we don't hold on to anything because it's dependent on the conditions of that moment. Yeah, if we know this situation, this reality, we have nothing to desire. We have nothing to get big attachment. On the other hand, we have nothing to get angry. We have all experience through our senses. But because of ignorance, because of no knowledge about this situation, as soon as we look at a person who blamed me, what happens to me? What happens to you? You get angry. At that moment, what happens to our mind? We went to the real situation. We have no idea, now I read my mind. 
That is why as soon as we look at a person, if that person had done some bad deeds for me or my close friend, we get angry. We went to the real situation. But that person may have forgotten all things. Now he has no memory about that incident. But still we are living in the past experience. As soon as we look at that person, our mind runs to the past. We have no idea, we have no awareness that now I read my mind. That experience also arises this moment. Now I don't go to the real situation, now I read my mind. If we have this understanding, it says mindfulness. If we know the arising and ceasing, it means we have wisdom. If we can practice again and again this knowledge, as soon as we look at something, as soon as we hear something, as soon as we smell something, we uh, keep something, we know very well this experience arises this moment. According to conventional truth, actually I was describing before you came, and according to Buddhism, truth can be divided into two. Truth can be divided into two. The first one is the conventional truth. According to conventional truth, before you were born here, there was a world. Everything is here before you were born in the world. After you will die, all things remain here. It is true according to conventional truth. All doctrines, all teachings, Philosophers, religions, depends on this conventional truth. Before you were born, there was a world. After you will die, the world will remain. It is true according to conventional truth. If you live only this step of truth, you can overcome only 50% suffering in your life you have remained another 50%. That is why you have to become the next level of truth. It is said, ultimate truth. Ultimate truth. What says in ultimate truth? Ultimate truth. Before you were born here, there was no world. After you will die, the world doesn't remain. The world created by ourselves every moment. When you look at here, this is in your world. When you think about your vehicle, you have a vehicle. When you think about your doctorate, uh, you have a PhD degree. When you think your mom, you have a mom. You are a daughter. When you think about your grandma or grandfather, you are a grandson or daughter. We have only one experience once. Our life is only one. That also arises at the moment. If we have full awareness about this reality, if we can live with full awareness, full mindfulness every moment, it means we have mindfulness and we have wisdom. We do all things Seeing this reality, seeing, ceasing and arising. This is the knowledge we have to practice in this level. It is said, Buddhism, dependent origination. Changing is very easy to understand. Whether Buddha appeared or not in the world, anybody can understand the changing. You know, before the Lord Buddha uh, gave up his kingdom and his relatives, before his uh, ordination, he knew very well uh, that sickness, old age, uh, change in all things he knew. After he enlightened, he explained very clearly, I discovered the very important thing before I never understood before I never realized. I discovered 
I deli- uh, I uh, discovered, I analyzed, I understood very special thing before I have never understood. Then that is the thing which is dependent origination. According to dependent origination, always we create the world and we live in that world. Every moment our body is changing. It can be understood by any person. Our mind changes every moment. Our mind changes every moment. And it can be understood by a philosopher, psychologist. They can understand change in mind. It is not difficult to understand. The very important thing that we can understand, which is very important and difficult, that this thing, the dependent origination or impermanence. Impermanence means that this experience that we get through our senses um, happens in this moment. That is why we again and again uh, explain very special sentence in Buddhism. In Buddha's language, in Pali, it says, Abhutva Sambhutam Hoti Putva Nabhavisati. In Pali language. In India, there is a very ancient language, Pali, Sanskrit, like that. Pali is Buddha's language, Pali or Magadhi. And it says in Pali language, according to, uh, in English, it says that, Abhutva Sambhutam Hoti. Nothing comes to the present moment from the past. Kutva Nabhavisati, nothing goes to the future from the present. In this present moment, our experience arises and ceases. If we can realize, if we can understand and, and if, we, if we can live with this understanding, we have overcome suffering. We have overcome uh, unsatisfactoriness. It doesn't sound that we don't do our duties. Actually, after we have this knowledge, we do more things. Now you may do only one job after this knowledge. You may do more than one job. Why? Why do uh, do more jobs? Uh, with greed? With greed? No. You have to save money very quickly and you have time to practice this message before you go to sickness, before you go to old age. You may have more time to practice this uh, message and your, uh, your important thing is your life. You don't work until you are taking the stick. Hmm? Before you are falling down to bed in the old age, you earn money very quickly and you save something and you spend your valuable life for practicing this message. That is why you do more work if you have this knowledge in your young age when you are very strong. After you have this knowledge, your valuable thing is your life, your period when you live. Other people, until they are going to die, they earn money. Until they are going to bed, they earn money. But if we have this knowledge, we quickly earn some money which we need and we save something and we spend our valuable life to practice this message and we are hurry to get the result practicing this message in this life itself. Okay, knowledge and reflecting and practice. Practice is especially through the practice, we practice meditation. The first step of meditation is practicing concentration or tranquility. 
We try, we try to focus our mind using particular objects such as breathing meditation, loving kind meditation. We can use many techniques in Buddhism, practicing those techniques. We are clever to keep our mind with a particular object for a long time. Our success, our proficiency, our skillfulness depends on how long you can keep your mind with a particular object. Yeah. All the Sorry, real quick. It, to simplify, is it is it more or less like all we have is the present moment? Mm-hmm. Is that all we have? Is that is that the essence of? Please explain it. Yeah. So if if the pattern origination is mm-hmm. states that due to causes and conditions, things will uh, change, change or, mm-hmm. or, or yeah. Mm-hmm season arise mm-hmm. in this moment then that means that all we have is this moment, right? So mm-hmm. um, that in essence that, that's what it, it's, it's, it's saying to me is that all we really have is this present moment at all times, all the time, every time. Yeah. Actually I was describing about this situation, Samatha. Samatha is the first level of meditation. First of all we develop our ability to keep our mind for a long time with a particular object practicing some kind of meditation. If you can live for a long time with same mind situation, with practicing good ideas, such as loving kindness, breathing meditation, it is some kind of successes in our life. This is the persistent. With this concentrated mind, we reflect on impermanence. You know, in Indian tradition, we could see, we can see a lot of people who are in the world, who practice their tranquility for samatha in the maximum level. But their samatha, their mindfulness or their concentration only for concentration, not for understanding. When they meditate, their mind is full calm. When they come to the society, they are like common people. They have no such a discipline. According to Buddhism, we practice samatha not only for sitting for a long time with concentrated mind. After we concentrate our mind with the concentrated mind, we reflect on impermanence. We see this arising and ceasing again and again with concentrated mind. Uh, Suddenly, it is difficult to concentrate on impermanence. We can discuss it, we can think it, but it is not strong. For the strong uh, understanding a certain result, we have to practice impermanence with concentrated mind. So very deep, deep. (laughs) Yeah, you know, when we look at a water, is if water is very dust or polluted, we can see the bottom of the water. When the water is very clear and clean, then we can see the bottom of the water because of the clear water. Our mind is like that. If our mind is very clear, calm and quiet, with practice in concentration meditation, it is very easy to reflect on impermanence through this concentration mind. That is why we practice both of meditation techniques. And we practice Samatha meditation not as final result, final goal, ultimate goal. Our final goal is not Samatha, not seeing the mindfulness. Our final goal, our ultimate goal is seeing, ceasing and arising. If we have full awareness to see ceasing and arising, it means we live in the present moment. Now we discuss about the living in the present moment. What is the living in the present moment real idea? Some people think that you forget your past, you forget your future, think about only present. It is correct? Buddhism never says it. Buddhism never says that you have to forget your past or future. 
when you practice this message your memory about past grows up that is a result of practicing mindfulness if you forget something be sure your mind is not pure when we clear our mind our memory grows up when we practice mindfulness we can reflect on even we were born in the world not only born time but we can think we can remember about when we were in our mother's womb not only in our mother's womb we can reflect we can remember our previous lives more than hundreds of kalpas or births in previous lives when we practice mindfulness buddhism never says that you have to forget it you have to forget your past or future buddhism never says but the special thing is as soon as we remember our past we remember it with mindfulness we doesn't we don't run to the past now because of ignorance because of no idea about impermanence as soon as we remember something about our past experience we run to the past we live in the past we suffer or desire in the past if you have mindfulness you can remember anything as your previous experience you don't turn to the past living in the present moment with full awareness you can read your mind when you read your mind you know very well now i am not going to the past now i read only my mind we have full awareness then we have no suffer we don't suffer we don't get angry that is the difference that living in the present moment in buddhism and other religions if you live in the present moment it doesn't sound according to buddhism you have to forget your past or future we can remember our past or future it doesn't matter it is not a fault what is the fault the fault is as soon as we remember something if our mind runs to the past then we live in the past experience then suffering comes to our life for example when your close friend or relative dies what happens to you you are sad you cry you cry you sad what happens to you you go to the past experience you live with the incidents in the past you have no idea now i read my mind that is why you cry but if you have full mindfulness with understanding of impermanence you can remember his all experience what you did with him or her you can remember all things as soon as you remember that experience you know very well now i read my mind you can cry even though you like you can cry because of mindfulness and wisdom and here today especially these things we discuss because of you <laughs> actually these things we have discussed uh, in this class a lot of times and the importance of knowledge reflecting and practice here today uh, i hope to discuss a special topic in buddhism the four noble truth the four noble truth is the heart of buddhism all doctrines that would would explain include into this topic buddha's all doctrines focus on how we get rid of suffering or unsatisfactoriness dukkha dukkha i think you have heard about dukkha yeah in hindi language also i think uh, it is very familiar to indian tradition dukkha dukkha means not only painful not only pain but if we can control something although we don't uh, we want to keep something permanently our figure or our good complexion or our friends 
although we want to keep them for a long time permanently but we can control them that is one of the things of unsatisfactoriness according to four noble truth one day buddha said i preach to the world in the past only two things now i if i preach something to the world i explain only two things in the future if i explain something in the future to the world i explain only two things what they are suffering and yeah suffering. yeah very good <coughs> suffering or unsatisfactoriness and getting rid of unsatisfactoriness would they explain not only suffering or unsatisfactoriness he explained how do we get rid of unsatisfactoriness that is very important then the first thing is the the unsatisfactoriness uh, according to four noble truth first one is the unsatisfactoriness second one is the cause of unsatisfactoriness the third one is the the cessation of unsatisfactoriness fourth one is the path that leads to get rid of suffering or get rid of unsatisfactoriness these four things everything can be divided into four for example illness uh, illness the cause of illness um the cessation of illness and medicine uh, this concept ha uh, uh, has come from ayurveda medicine in indian tradition tradition everything can be divided into four things but all of them can be into two on the other hand all of four things can be included into one that unsatisfactoriness or mindfulness if you know unsatisfactoriness according to buddha's message if you have heard what buddha said about satisfactory unsatisfactoriness you know the cause of unsatisfactoriness and also if you have real knowledge about the cause of unsatisfactoriness you know very well how do we cease cease get rid of suffering and also fourth one we know the path that leads to get rid of suffering what is the suffering or unsatisfactoriness that buddha explained there are common things too birth is suffering jati vidukha vyadhi vidukho illness is suffering jara vidukha jara vidukha all age aging is suffering marana vidukha death is suffering and appehi sampayogo dukkho uh, associated with what we don't like is suffering pehi vipayogo dukkho separation from which we like is also suffering and again buddha said another special thing that sankirtena panchupadana khanda dukkha in brief in brief in brief five aggregates that we have clinging is also suffering that is some kind of difficult thing however five aggregates also very important i have uh, explained it in the second page you can see five aggregates um in buddha's language in pali it says rupa rupa means matter vedana feelings and perception sanya perception and sankara mental formations and fifth one is consciousness vijnana rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana these five things are our life and eh? it is very important if we look at something these five aggregates arise at the moment not only arising but suddenly it ceases this five things cannot be divided it cannot be divided 
these five things always together. If we hear something, if we see something, if we smell something, if we eat something, it says these five aggregates arise. We have only one experience once. Do you believe it? Uh, when we look at something, we have only that experience. Suddenly it ceases, and other experience comes together. But once we have only one experience, only through one sense. Because of it is very fast, we are ignorant that all of the experience are together. But we have only one experience through one sense, one. That is very important. If we have some experience through our senses, it means these five things, five aggregates arise at the moment. Not only arise, but suddenly, promptly, instantly, it ceases. It goes to next experience. This is the nature of our life. Actually, in the physical world, we can never divide these five things. These four five things we have to understand in our intelligence, in our mind. For example, when you go to the beach, you can see the horizon. You know horizon? When uh, sky and uh, ocean uh, close, we can see the horizon. Um, you have experience about horizon? You have experience? You can see the a place where uh, sky and ocean near? Physically, never we can see. Uh, it is only mirage. But we can see it. But we never think that there is a place which is near uh, ocean and sky. Which meet, which meets uh, uh, horizon, uh, ocean and sky we never seen. But we can see it. But we never go to the place where the sky and ocean near us. We never go to the search it. We know very well. We can only see it. This is also like that. These five things we can never identify in the physical world. But we have to know these five things in our intelligence, by our intelligence. And however, this is the reality. Hmm? Buddha said one day, if you are intelligent, if you are intelligent, you may think that I have to learn a lot of things. I have to learn a lot of languages and subjects. I have to get a lot of degrees. If you are intelligent, you may think, but Buddha said, if you are intelligent, you have to learn, learn only thing. What is that? You have to learn only these five things. Again and again, you have to clear your knowledge about these four th five things. It means you are going to understand, you are going to realize your entire life, mind and body. If you have real knowledge about these five things, it means we are ready to understand impermanence. These five things are not, imper not permanent. They are impermanent. They arise with the conditions. This, according to conventional truth, before you came here, this table was here. But according to ultimate truth, <coughs> This experience arises when we look at here, when we hear about this, so, uh, when we keep my hand here uh, through this experience, we get experience or knowledge about this table in this moment. It doesn't sound that that experience was before we were coming here, according to ultimate truth. If we have this understanding, 
we do some duties if we want to clean this uh, table we don't neglect it and uh, this is impermanence it doesn't need to clean we never think we do our duties we live in the according to conventional truth and we respond to the conventional truth because the world depends on conventional truth we don't overcome conventional truth physically but mentally mentally we have overcome this conventional truth there is a very good example when you go to the mirror with your pet pet your dog that dog thinks that there is a same picture same person same dog in the mirror the other person you are here with your pet do you think that there is a same person there another person there in the mirror we never think but both of us can see the same pictures dog also can see the same dog we also can the same person what about the intelligence what is the difference of intelligence both of us can same figures but dog thinks that there is a real dog there but we never think it because of intelligence our understanding also like that when we live in this world when others smile or laugh with us we laugh we act with them but we have a upper level understanding they think they talk about their previous experience living in the present past moment we also do some responses to them because we live in the conventional truth but in mentally in mind we laugh because of they are ignorant and uh, they discuss their past living in the past moment but you don't go to the past you do some responses to them but like that person in the mirror your understanding is very high you live with them you do your you do your responses to them but you have overcome their understanding you don't get angry with them you pay your uh, attention to them but you have overcome their knowledge their understanding you have overcome suffering because you live in the present moment you don't run from the society after you get this experience you live in the society you pay your kindness to them you fulfill your duties in your day to day life but your thinking pattern is very high because of this understanding about impermanence and karmic law however um the course and the, the first thing is in uh, for noble truth is that the unsatisfactoriness unsatisfactoriness means suffering uh, the second one is the cause of unsatisfactoriness what is the cause of unsatisfactoriness the nearest reason is desire or big attachment why do we have big attachment because of ignorance that dog which is with you bark to the mirror why because of ignorance he doesn't know that there is no one the same person that is why he it bark that is why he is angry with that pet in the mirror but you never get angry because of understanding eh uh, and also although your figure is very beautiful in the mirror you never go to the catch it in the mirror why because of understanding because of your intelligence or wisdom if you have real knowledge about this world through this understanding we see these pictures we can listen in some good sounds but we don't want to catch them we know very well we can see this picture if we go to the catch this one we can catch a picture we can catch only a ball 
and the picture is beauty to only my eyes then when you have some sound which is very nice so sweet about dump you know dump huh? although it is very sweet when you go to catch it what you have to catch you have to catch the skin of cow isn't it is not sweet for your hand it is beauty it is nice only to your ears our all experience also like that when you eat something you taste it when you taste it when you have something in your plate you think now i taste in i'm tasting the same food but it is same now you yeah now you have experienced something in your mouth it is in your mouth if you keep it out that is your present experience it is not same the in the plate but we think when we eat something getting something from the plate when it is in your mouth when you taste it you think surely now i am tasting in this food now really we are tasting in the food which is in my mouth just now our all experience also like that if we have some uh, beautiful matter or physical things outside when it comes to our experience it goes to our mind not like in the physical world if you have this understanding um we can um we can interest we can happy in the world we can be happy in the world but we have no big attachment you know enlightened person who are in the world they were the real person uh who interested uh in the world seeing the reality in the world but our understanding our feelings depends on the catching these things we want to catch we want to act we want to keep all of them to near but without desire and uh, we can get this experience if we are intelligent with your mind and uh, first course is the <coughs> suffering especially in the first level first step we have to understand the five aggregates and second step for the cause of unsatisfactoriness we have to understand the reason the nearest reason is desire the first major reason is ignorance if we can overcome ignorance suddenly we can overcome all kind of desires or anger if we have no desire it means on the other hand we have no anger if you angry with something it means you have desire you have big attachment with something that is why you quarreling that is why you are fighting huh if somebody uh, is still this uh, this one uh do you worry you don't worry if somebody uh, came and uh, came and is still your bad what happens to you don't worry yeah you worry you get angry you upset you are going to hit him yeah and if we can overcome this error it means automatically anger is overcome and the next one is the the cessation of suffering the cessation of unsatisfactoriness it means we can overcome if we can overcome ignorance or this error it means we can reach to the real happiness or liberation the fourth one is the path uh, we may have not only knowledge not only practice and uh, reflecting but we have a path we may have a path and uh, although you have a map to go to la you can't reach to the la although you have a navigator you can't reach the uh, reach to la you have to drive it 
You have to reflect it again and again when you drive. And although you don't drive, sitting in the car, you can't reach to LA. You have to drive. Then with the map, reflecting to, reflecting on LA, if you drive, you can reach to LA. This knowledge is also like that. First of all, you may have knowledge and you have to think it again and again and also you have to practice Samatha and Vipassana. It says into three steps. First of all, we may have, we may have discipline in our body and speech. It says virtue or morality. And with good discipline, we keep our mind with a particular object using Samatha meditation concentration or tranquility meditation and with concentrated mind using insight meditation or vipassana meditation we reflect on impermanence again and again ceasing and arising arising and ceasing this is the path that three parts that virtue concentration and wisdom it can be divided into eight, according to Buddha's message. It says in page three, as the noble eightfold path. Samaditi, right understanding. First of all, you may have good vision or view, and also right ideas. Samma sankappa, right speech. Samma vacha, right action. Samma kamanta, right livelihood. Samma Ajiva, right effort, right Samma Vayama, right mindfulness, Samma Sati, right concentration, um, Samma Samadhi. This is the path, like driving, we have, we have practiced a path. This is the real path that would explain to achieve final bliss of liberation, getting rid of all kind of suffering, so unsatisfactoriness. Day by day, we have to develop our knowledge, good view, vision, understanding, and right ideas, and speech, action, livelihood, all things are very important. As much as you have this knowledge, you are on this path. What is the reason? You want to get the result. Your main purpose of life is happiness. You have to become more happy. That is why you are hurry to practice this message to get rid of suffering. All other religions, they have explained the results practicing their doctrines after death. But the difference in Buddhism is if you practice this message as much as you have practiced this message, you can see the results before death. If you practice this message in your very young age, you can see the result in your young age itself. If you practice this message in your old age, you may have to see the result in your old age, but not hereafter. That is why Buddha said, practicing this message is visible real result, immediately effective visible result and immediately effective. This is the thing in Buddhism. That is why our main ambition should be in our life is knowing this message and practice this message whether you are Buddhist or not, if you are intelligent. Buddha said we may have only one qualification that intelligence. Uh, Buddha announced, not to Buddhist, he announced to the intelligent persons, if we are intelligent, we can see the results. But we may have good qualities. The first thing is the very important thing, honesty. Honesty is the very, very important thing. When we practice this message, Although we have a lot of mistakes in our life, it doesn't matter. If we have only one quality, that honesty, 
we can overcome all mistakes or misbehavior in our life. If we tell true and if we don't steal, if we have good character, if we are honesty, if we are honest, we can overcome all our mistakes in our life. On the other hand, we always um, practice loving kindness. Huh? Again and again, day by day, we have to develop our loving kindness to others. If we are angry with the people, it is very difficult to practice this message. We should keep our mind very present and calm. We, have, we should have an eye to look at others with present mind. It is very important. When we practice loving kindness, when we look at a person, when we meet a person, we think about that person as our only son or daughter. That is the highest example. If you look at some person like our same age, like you, you are only brother or sister, you can think about that person as your only uh, brother or sister. If you have elder person, if you meet elder person, you think that person as your mom or dad. If we have this kind of awareness or attention, feelings about the people, we have no struggles, we have no disturbances in our life. It's very easy to practice this message. Then we are very comfortable when we practice this message. On the other hand, we should be intelligent. Huh? Intelligence. Intelligence also one of the qualities. What is the intelligence or wisdom that we should have? You should have many degrees. You should know several languages. No. The nature of the intelligence is understanding of impermanence, arising and ceasing. You may have a doctorate. You may have a degree, first degree. It doesn't matter, maybe you have no any qualifications in your education, any literacy, it doesn't matter. But you have only quality that intelligence means that you have an ability to understand arising and ceasing about this experience. In Buddha's period, there were some persons who received this result who were well educated. There were some persons who were laborers. There were some persons who were in the very lowest caste in Indian tradition. There are many caste problems. There were some persons who were in the very lowest caste level, but because they were intelligent, they could get the results from this message. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask. We talked uh, more than one hour. Hmm. Mr. Eric, oh, sorry, Mr. Just, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you fully realize dependent origination, how is it, or why is it, that you become this compassionate, loving being after that, as, a, as an arahant, or, or mm-hmm. why does that open up? Is it because all your you're purified and everything is gone, mm-hmm. and you are so? Um, why is that the byproduct? Yeah, actually, loving kindness we practice in the primary step, mm-hmm. primary level. Yeah, when we go to the highest level, if you have full awareness to see arising and ceasing, you have overcome these steps. You are in the highest level. And uh, when you look at a person in primary level, you may think about your son or daughter, but when you go to the highest level with the dependent origination, you look at only the present experience. As soon as you look at a person, you don't go to the outside. You come to inside. You think, now this matter arises this moment. You catch this in here. But in the primary level, we go to outside. But when we go to the deep level, we come to inside. For example, when you are very young age, very a little boy, uh, if your house uh, had a, a doorbell, doorbell, 
in very young age when somebody rings that bell we ran to the bell we ran to the bell near the bell in very young age when you grow in up when bell rings where did you go you go to the door hmm in very young age when bell rings we went to the bell but gradually when we grow in up when bell rings we didn't go to the bell we went to the door that is also same in primary level we see outside things as impermanent but when we go to the deep level as soon as you look at something as soon as you hear something as soon as you smell something you eat something you reflect on your mind and this experience arises this moment in my mind as a concept but when we enter to this path we want to reduce some kind of dependence which arises from outside that is why we reflect on loving kindness we use we practice loving kindness yes so how do we practice loving kindness when we're not truly feeling it like if there's a person just a repetitive trigger a repetitive mm-hmm. day after day every present moment looks the same mm-hmm. <laughs> how do you truly practice loving kindness when you are Mhm. A part of that scenario. Yeah. Actually, it has some steps. <coughs> uh, at the very beginning when we practice loving kindness, first of all, we practice kindness for our life. May I be well, happy and peaceful. Again and again, we we have our success, our own success. Then after that, we think about others because especially we think our mental our peace of mind and we want our peace of mind that is why we practice it whether they happy or not it doesn't matter the main purpose of our life is happiness for the happiness we have to keep our mind in calm and quiet that is the purpose of practicing loving kindness first of all we know very well what is the purpose that we practice this loving kindness the purpose of practicing loving kindness is the peace of our own mind and then first of all we reflect on loving kindness for our life may i be well happy and peaceful again and again we practice it then we can practice it of our close friends or relatives may my parents uh, may my brothers and sisters may my friends be well happy and peaceful again and again we practice then in the other level we can reflect on others may all beings be well happy and well <coughs> why we do practice this message there are many reasons one of them is as i mentioned before peace of mind on the other hand you know in this world daily a lot of people help us they work hard they cultivate some fruits and flower so anything what we like what we want what we need they work hard and uh, they don't sleep at night working for us and uh, thinking about that um, we wish their success uh, a lot of people in the world they prepare food for us they uh, they are making some clothes for us they are preparing something when you drive on way on the freeway always you want to pass others but other people what they do do some of them are nurses some of them are doctors some of them are farmers who daily help you when we think about that we have no trouble we have no struggle in then we have an ability to i uh, ability to uh, see them with friendly ness then our we we can overcome our stress now we want only our success 
if we know this reality, we wish we are success too. On the other hand, although they have mistakes, sometimes they have done some mistakes for us, but we can think something. Most of them who are around you, they were your close relatives and friends in previous lives. They have helped you a lot as your parents, as your children, as your close relatives and friends in your previous lives. Then we can think if we can think about this reality, although they have mistakes, we don't care even. We, we think about their service that they have done for us. Then main purpose of practicing loving kindness is getting rid of stress or suffering in your life for your mental health, for your peace of mind. And little by little, when we practice this message, first of all, we like our life, we wish our success, and we wish our close relatives and friends success, and we wish all of other success in this life, in this world. And if we have reflect on it again and again, may all beings be well, happy and peaceful. When you drive, you can think it. You can meditate, not only sit in meditation, but any posture, sitting, lying down, standing, walking, in four, four, four postures, four postures, you can practice this method. Again and again, you think about this, you can think when you look at a person, that person works every day for me. On the other hand, that person is maybe, uh, he was my close friend or relative in previous lives. As soon as you look at a person, you are friendly, you have no anger, although they have mistakes or misbehavior. Then, especially we practice this message for our mental culture, peace of mind. Sometimes, although we wish them, may they be well, happy and peaceful, they have no results. They have no results, although we wish them. But, the main benefit that you gain to your life, to your mind. Although we wish them, although they, if they have a big karmic reaction, big karmic result in previous life, we can change them. It is unable to change their life. But, when you reflect on this loving kindness, it means you develop your peace of mind. Eh? When you do some good deeds, when you offer some flowers to the Buddha, Buddha doesn't need flowers. When you offer some green or foods to the Buddha, doesn't need, Buddha, Buddha doesn't need uh, food or uh, uh, drinks because he has already passed away. When you do these activities, what happens to your mind? You earn your peace of mind. Your mind is very pure and calm. That is why Buddhism says, practicing merit means decorating your mind. When you practice loving kindness, you decorate your mind. You purify your mind, whether they have or not the result. Although we wish them, sometimes they don't have the result, although we wish them. But when you practice these kind of meritorious deeds, the main results come to your life. We do all of these things for our peace of mind. Then, little by little, we can practice it day by at least five minutes. At least five minutes, if you can practice loving kindness and increase it little by little, it is very important to your peace of mind. Have you any other question? I don't know you have you had the uh, real answer. Yeah, um, do, do you have to go? Like, no, no. I know one more time, but yeah. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm trying to ask is if it's one particular person uh-huh. every hour, every day, uh-huh. right, who's triggering, who's angry, who's, uh-huh. and you're the target, 
Mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. How do you remain? I mean, how much loving kindness can you practice uh -huh. when when it's just a constant every day, every you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm talking about a particular situation. Yeah, particular, particular person. person. Yeah. Not necessarily um, broadly like mm -hmm. general society. Yeah, yeah, I know. And there are some situations if we have a person who should be focused. First of all, we can practice loving kindness for our life. Then after that, we practice loving kindness for our close relatives or friends uh, who are friendly with us. Then next level, we can focus that person. And we can keep that person in, in front of us. Sometimes uh, he has done some mistakes for your life. But you think this person, although he had some mistakes, he has done some mistake for you, uh, for my life, but he has done me some good deeds. Not only bad deeds, he, sometimes he has done for me some good deeds. Then I can think about his good way and think in his positive way, positive action. We can reflect, we can cultivate loving kindness for him. On the other hand, if it is difficult, we have another thing that this person, although this person is an enemy in this birth, but in previous lives uh, he might be my close relatives or friend, and uh, he might be my father or mother in previous life. He has done a lot of things for my life in previous lives, although he has some mistakes. That is why I have to develop my mindfulness to that person. Again and again I reflect on it. Finally, that is another thing. If I am angry with this person, he hasn't uh, no bene uh, bad benefit. The bad benefit is to my life. Uh, if I am angry with him, I lose my peace of mind. Therefore, I, reap, I wish his success. Although he had mistake, although he had misbehavior, I want success. I want my peace of mind. Therefore, I forget his bad way, I think his life and I wish his success in this life. On the other hand, when we go to the higher level, we think in <coughs> according to impermanence. Although there is a person, sometimes we angry with the physical body. As soon as we see a person, as soon as we remember a person who had a mistake, we mostly think his physical body. If we are angry with his physical body, after death, we are going to hit him? No, after death, we never angry with him. When we look at his dead body, we never angry with that body. What is the reason? Mind is not there. When we look at the person, who is our enemy. We have to think, this physical body is not only his only thing. This physical body acts because of mind. When mind and body is together, there is a person. When, if I have no mind, I can move this my hand. I even, I can't stand. If I have no mind, my entire life depends on my mind. But, Mind is invisible. If we are angry with mind, mind is invisible. Then when we can see this reality, when we are angry with the person, eh, what we are going to do him? Eh, with whom do we angry? With this body or mind? Uh, if we angry with his physical body, after he die, we have to hit him, but we never do it. If we angry with his mind, but we can never see the mind, mind is invisible. Then if we can see this reality, where is our anger? Outside? No anger is in our mind. 
anger arises in our mind not outside they are there is something in outside as is the body as a living person but really when we go to the reality this error or anger arises in my mind not outside for example if there is a person who is your enemy when he comes here you are angry when that person is my close friend who have who has helped me a lot what happens to me i am happy if that person is enemy real enemy the experience should be same both you and me but when that person comes here you are angry i am happy but happiness so angry we are is it in that person no anger or desire or happiness is in our mind if we are intelligent we can understand this reality then little by little we don't stop in this level loving kindness we use loving kindness as a primary level quality eh yeah? if we always angry with the person it is difficult to reach to higher level experience higher level results that is why we have to overcome anger but little by little we go and to the higher levels hmm. suddenly we can understand this reality if we are intelligent if we have listening to this message according to our intelligence we can catch some kind of level in higher plan if we are intelligent the main thing is our happiness that we wish in our life if something disturb our peace of mind we should be intelligent to not to give a chance to disturb our peace of mind that is our success that is our proficiency our proficiency depends on how much we have given to the chance to our mind with your mind if we give a chance to outside person or things to come and disturb our peace of mind we are weak we have no skillfulness we have no proficiency we should be skillful that if we can understand if we can overcome anger it means we are skillful and uh, uh, the main reason is the uh, the very important thing in our life is peace of mind uh, we should not give a chance to outside person or things to disturb our peace of mind if we are intelligent if we have mindfulness always if we lose mindfulness even though we have knowledge if we don't practice reflecting or practicing our knowledge is useless that is why we have not only knowledge every moment we should try to keep our mindfulness how much defilements come to my mind as soon as defilement such as anger desire come to my mind if you have full mindfulness full awareness you don't give a chance to disturb your peace of mind yeah in this primary level you practice loving kindness for your life for your close friends and relatives and then we go to the enemies and we think many ways many ways first of all we can think <coughs> although they are enemies now in past in the past they have helped me a lot when they were my close friends they have helped me we can think about them and also after that we can think about our previous lives and also little by little we go to the higher level as soon as we look at a person we can think about various ways as soon as you look at a person think about not only physical body but he has a mind that is why you see mind is the more important thing a uh, body can nothing if he has no mind a uh, 
our all activity, act, activities depends on our mind. That person also like that. If you think about mind and body, the process of mind and body is a person. If one thing is not here, there is no person. In various ways we can think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, we discussed a lot of things more than one hour and forty minutes. Um, today we specially discuss about Four Noble Truth, the main um, doctrine in Buddhism. Actually, we can say it's like a heart in Buddhism. All Buddha's teachings, uh, which the Lord Buddha explained in his entire life, 45 years, can be included into this uh, Four Noble Truth. That is very important. Uh, you are so lucky to listen to this message. I wish you all the best. Now the time to transfer this message to our beloved relatives. As a tradition, after we do any kind of meritorious deed, we transfer these merits to our beloved relatives who passed away. Now the time for that, uh, think about your uh, departed relatives. And may they receive these merits and may they attain final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's uh, transfer these merits reciting the stanza. Idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. Idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. Idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. May all divine persons, uh, deities and angels, uh, receive these merits, uh, receiving these merits, may they, uh, may they achieve a good life and may they keep their eye on you too. With that intention, let's transfer these merits to guardian deities and angels too. Ittavataja amhehi sambhatam punya sampadam Sambhe deva numodanto sambhe sampatti sindhya Ittavata ce amhehi sambhe tang punya sampadam Sambhe deva numodanto sambhe sampatti sindhya Ittavata ce amhehi sambhe tang punya sampadam Sambhe deva anumodanto sambhe sampatthe sindhya. With the power of all these merits, uh, may, they, may, they, uh, may, you be, may you be well, happy and peaceful. May you live alone with happiness. Uh, I wish you all the best. May the people gem bless you. Dukkham panta chanin dukkham, bayam panta chanin bayam, sokam panta chanis sokam, anto sambe pipaninom. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. May all of you be well, happy and peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.